Mark Duffner's diagram for success includes an offense that has shattered 53 school records in two years. While the O continues to rack up the numbers, the D is slowly developing. The on-the-job training of last year has helped the defense make some noise in 94. The defense is pointing toward Death Valley as their next challenge. Tommy West has had two weeks to think over his team's stumble at Virginia. Clemson fans will be out in force as their defense looks to put the big hurt on the Terrapins. So hear the tiger roar. Maryland and Clemson next. and Violet Sports presents the best in regional college football, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, where people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By Delta Airlines, the airline of ACC country. You'll love the way we fly. By Lee Apparel, maker of regular, relaxed, and easy-fit jeans and casual pants. Lee is the brand that fits. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By Hardee's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By CarQuest Auto Parts. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. And by your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealer, home of the minivan store. Welcome to Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina, where today Jefferson Pilot Sports brings you the Exxon ACC Game of the Week between the Maryland Terrapins and the Clemson Tigers. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Jack Corrigan. Back in the early 80s, Jack, these two teams used to dice back and forth for the leadership of the ACC, but a win today keeps the winner in the middle of the pack. Well, Mark Duffner in the midst of a rebuilding program at Maryland and Tommy West and his staff retooling to a degree here at Clemson. So, yes, it's a big win today for both programs. For Maryland, they're going to go with Kevin Foley as their quarterback to try and get them their third straight win. Maryland has not won three in a row since 86, and ironically, that's the last time they won here in Clemson. Clemson's got some changes on offense, and we'll be back to talk about those, and we'll have the kickoff right after this. In business, there never seems to be enough of it. And the last thing you can afford to do is run out of it. Time. So rest assured, Delta Airlines will help you make the most of it. With over 4,900 flights a day to over 300 cities around the world. And best of all, we'll make sure you arrive relaxed and refreshed with plenty of time to spare. Delta Airlines. With so many people still enjoying the service and convenience of their local true value, another use may have to be found for those humongous hardware warehouses. This month, the true value. Get Rubbermaid's 30-gallon trash can for just $7.77 and a Kitta home fire extinguisher for only $8.99. Tower, I uh, think I once bought a lawnmower here. True value. Help is just around the corner. incredible value is the all-new Eagle Town. This is exciting. Certified government accountant Warren Kruger is here to help us find out. Take it for a spin. Come off. He's off. Warren, the wonder accountant is back. Warren, what do you think? Sounds great. 140 horsepower engine, dual airbags, double wishbone suspension. What would the U.S. government pay for something like this? 14 million tops. Shouldn't that decimal point be over there? Yeah. Test drive a talent at your Jeep and Eagle dealer or call us. 
Back here at Death Valley, the Clemson Tigers about to undergo one of those great traditions. But when you look at Clemson this week, they've had the off week to think about the loss to Virginia, and Tommy West has used the time to institute a lot of lineup changes, including Lewis Solomon at uh, quarterback. Well, they used last week's off week as like a mini spring practice. They've moved Lewis Solomon in at quarterback. The option attack get more speed in their offense. The second thing they want to do is involve Antoine Wyatt more. He is their featured player on offense. They felt like they were forcing the ball to him when he was strictly a wide receiver. They have moved him back to tailback in the hopes of getting him more touches. You know, the great line they say right now in football, more touches, that's what they want Wyatt to have today. Now, Wyatt will have just that and getting ready to touch the rock right now, the Clemson Tigers, and there with it is Mike Hogwood. Quite a tradition, Steve, started under Frank Howard. They believe their magical powers in that rock, and this team is getting ready to come down stands line all along this hill there are no seats here this is a place where you come and celebrate and you scream as you can see the players are ready to go and here they come the clemson tigers we'll be back with the kickoff of our acc game of the week it's clemson and maryland tells you that time is money. Uh -uh. We think time is a lot more valuable. That's why at First Union it matters so much how we handle your time. You need a fast response? You got it. Okay, you need you. account information? Call anytime, 24 hours a day. You want time to explore Good. refinancing your home? We won't rush you. The point is, it's your time, and that matters. And at First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. a certain level of excellence. The experience to get the job done right and a reputation for quality. Like dependable CarQuest filters, high efficiency filters keep your engine running clean and smooth. That's why professionals choose CarQuest. CarQuest filters, superior by design. So for the best possible performance, install what the pros install. CarQuest. Welcome to the pros. Okay, these guys are the party people. I mean, look at them. They are hungry. So then these guys here, they're the host team. They send this guy over here to Hardee's for fresh fried chicken. It's the perfect play. Hardee's chicken deal is just $5.99. Eight pieces of chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. Okay, watch the replay. Eight pieces of Hardee's chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. So when these guys come rushing in, here's all this chicken to tackle. When you toss a party, make the big play. Have plenty of Hardee's fried chicken to pass around. Soft leather, fine wood, acoustic perfection, front row seats, the experience of beautiful music has always been enhanced by a rich atmosphere, Acura, some things are worth the price. Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. A beautiful day here in the region known as the upstate of South Carolina. There's our temperature, 78 degrees. It could get into the low 80s. Not much of a breeze at all. It's been a beautiful weather week, really, here in South Carolina. Joe O'Donnell getting set to kick off for the Maryland Terrapins. They won the coin toss and deferred their option until the second half. O'Donnell, one of the new sensations for the Terrapins. In fact, to receive that's Tundra Williams. And to his right shoulder will be Andre Humphrey. So we are set to go. It's parents and youth weekend here on the Clemson campus. Everybody's here. They're expecting over 70,000 to attend. And Joe O'Donnell gets ready to kick it off and start us off on our Exxon ACC game of the week. Under it is Humphrey, one yard deep. Humphrey, nice wall set up by Matt Reeves, and he gets up to the 29-yard line. Brought down on the play by Maryland's special teams players. That's Baker on the tackle. And let's take a look at the lineups offensively here for the Clemson offense. Some changes. Some changes. Solomon at quarterback. You've got Raymond Priester, a true freshman, at fullback, and Antoine Wyatt, the tailback. 
a growing offensive line. The only veterans, Putnam and Will Young. And Lewis Solomon, hero of the comeback two years ago against Virginia, played by injuries. The first handoff goes to Wyatt. And Wyatt tries to get away from Eric Hicks and gets out to about the 32-yard line. It'll be a gain on the play of about two yards as we take a look at that Maryland defense. A seasoning group as it's gone along. Well, Jamie Bragg and Pat Ward, the ex-offensive lineman, now anchoring the middle with Webster and White now the starters. Mike Settles playing very well at outside linebacker. And Ratcliffe Thomas, the leading tackler in the conference. Good secondary that's gotten better every game. Second and a long seven. Maybe eight. This is Solomon on his own number out to the 34-yard line. Ball control important. Raphael Wall and Ratcliffe Thomas and Mike Settles in on the tackle of Lewis Solomon. He's making his fourth career start here at Clemson. Ball control, one of the things they definitely want to do, Steve. The other thing they want to do, get quicker. Tommy West said they were just taking too long to have things happen offensively. That's why Solomon and Wyatt are now the quarterback and tailback. Third down and five for Solomon. No score. First possession of the football game. Solomon needs the 40 for the first down, and he won't get it. It's out to about the 37-yard line. Give him a gain of two. Brings uh, Mike Settles in for the tackle, and the punting unit is on. Well, Maryland did not expect Solomon to throw the ball. Louis rolling away from his throwing arm. Had freshman Kenya Crooks slanting open. Didn't know if he could make the throw, so he hung on to the ball and came up a couple of yards shy of the first down. There's Nelson Welch, 20 punts thus far this season, and he's kicking to A.J. Johnson. And this is a change on special teams for Maryland. Jermaine Lewis out with a shoulder separation. And uh, that means other people will have to take over. The punt by Welch, however, will not be returned. It's out of bounds at the 29-yard line. A 34-yard kick, no return on the punt by Nelson Welch in the Maryland offense comes out on the field led by Kevin Foley this week as we take a look at those offensive starters for the Terrapins. Alan Williams who has really come on now that that ankle has healed up in their single back running game. G. Roy Simon the top receiver in terms of number of catches in the conference. A veteran line headed up by All-American candidate Steve Ingram at left tackle. They're playing with a tight end this week Eric Henry as Foley brings him out under center at his own 30-yard line. Quick flare pass to G.Y. Simon, and Simon has another first down and out over the 46-yard line. Brought down on the tackle by Darnell Stevens, chiefly as we take a look at that Clemson defense. Well, they were anticipating Maryland running the ball on first down. They had three deep coverage, so G. Roy Simon had lots of space. I don't know if that was a called play or fully checked into it, but it was a good first down call. Their key all afternoon against Clemson will be to do the opposite of what the defense anticipates. First and 10, out of the 47-yard line. Alan Williams a long setback. Foley, getting set to gun for the sidelines, has Simon again for his second catch and 29th of the season into Clemson territory at the 47-yard line. Peter Ford in on the primary tackle. Let's take a look at that Clemson, Clemson defense. Simpson, Curry, and Cross in the front line. The keys to their defense, Darnell Stevens and Wardell Rouse, the two outside linebackers, are having a great year. Tim Jones, their top tackler among the inside linebackers. The secondary has gotten more help in recent weeks from Andre Humphrey and Dexter McLean in the extra back situation. Humphrey comes in as a starter today for the first time this year for Andy Ford. Second down, and about five, the first running play of the game, Alan Williams. Looked like he had some good yardage until he ran into Lamar Simpson and company. Carlos Curry there on the play as well at the 45-yard line. And they're going to give him a nice generous spot to the 43, so mark it a gain of five. Well, this is what Maryland wants to do. They want to make a minimum of four yards on first down to give them all the options they want on second and third down. You see Mark Duffner, he is a defensive tactician by design and leaves a lot of the offense to his coordinator, Dan Derazio. Third down and two, no score. You see Maryland's conversion on third to first. Fumble of the snap, it's picked up, it looks like Curry. Carlos Curry has picked up the ball. We have a flag down on the play, however, in the Clemson secondary. And when you have that flag, Dead ball. 
Delay of the game before the snap. Five-yard penalty. So the fumble goes for Knox. Eric Greenstein, who had some problems with Scott Milanovic in his first start at West Virginia, that really looked like fully pulled away too soon. The snap seemed to be far enough back. Tommy West saying, boy, we cannot catch a break here in 94 to this point for Clemson. They had the fumble recovery, but when you get that flag deep in the secondary, it's either illegal participation or delay a game because that's the two responsibilities pre-snap for the back judge. Third down now and seven. Maryland still with the football as the penalty killed the play. Otherwise, Clemson could have had it in midfield. Here comes Williams again. Another fumble. It's in back of a Clemson player, and Clemson has it. Marvin Cross made the hit. Lamar Simpson comes up with the football. Well, Clemson likes that even better, Steve. Not only do they get the ball, they gain about 20 yards on the double fumble situation. Running the draw play. And Williams just looked like he tried to take the ball away from the hit of Marvin Cross and threw it right out of his right out of his own grasp. They are tied for second in the nation in turnover ratio, and they've forced Maryland to cough it up here in Maryland territory at the 44. On first and 10, the handoff goes to the true freshman, Raymond Priest, out of the fullback slot to the 40-yard line. Tackle made by Al Wallace. Great opportunity afforded Clemson here as they came down in their first series, three downs and out, they punted. Maryland was moving the ball into the Clemson into the field. Two fumbles, one that finally Clemson was allowed to keep. Second down, the pitch. Antoine Wyatt, big block on the corner, and he's got another first down at the 29-yard line. Al Wallace comes up for the stop, but there you see the athleticism of Antoine Wyatt, and you understand why they want him to touch the ball. Speed, speed, and more speed. What's the point of acceleration on the pitch right here squares the shoulders and goes and he just runs by A.J. Johnson to pick up the first down. First down again. This is Wyatt. This time the going's not too strong and Al Wallace has been in on four tackles already gets a fifth. This Maryland defense has made progress each week against the run. Of course, they were the first people to find out about Robert Baldwin of Duke as Duke ran for over 300 yards. Florida State had a big day. They started to get it together against Wake Forest and did a great job against West Virginia and then did a great job against Wake Forest. That's what they have to do here. Second down and about 10. And a flag goes into the pile as Solomon keeps wrapped up by Jamie Bragg. Both clubs anxious to establish the run. Clemson wants to get balance in their offense. We have a hold now as the call against Clemson. They want, the, no matter what the changes are in the backfield, Jack, Tommy West has clearly put the pressure on his offensive line to produce. Well, it's going to be a, a good challenge this afternoon for the two veterans of that offensive line. We'll get Courtney Mosey with the official call here. Holding on the offense. 10 yards, still second down. Had to come in the area of junior left guard Will Young or junior center Trevor Putnam. They have to deal with the quickness of Jamie Bragg. Bragg does a great job of shooting the gap. That's what he did that time to disrupt the option, and one of them was hanging on to him while he was making the tackle. Second and 20, Solomon in a must-throw situation. On the run, throws complete. And that is Kenya Crooks. The true freshman from Seneca, South Carolina, nearby, his second catch of the season. And he moves Clemson downfield, but still shy of the first down. It's a gain of about eight yards. Zone coverage by Maryland, second and long. Crooks and the Clemson offense deciding we'll get half of it back, just a little turnout route. Coverage was well off, worrying about the deep threat. Good block by Antoine Wyatt to give Solomon time against the blitzing linebacker. Third and ten, no score. Wyatt, big yardage, up the middle, headed for the ten, and he's in the red zone. Antoine Wyatt brought down by Wade Inge at the end of a nice run. We have a Maryland player down at the six, but what a run by Antoine Wyatt. Raphael Wall, the injured 
Maryland player trying to make the stop on Antoine Wyatt. I'd say they're getting a little quicker to the line of scrimmage in the early going in this ball game for Tommy West's offense. They better get to the line quicker because Antoine Wyatt has made it clear he's going to run right up their back. We've got an injury on the field and a timeout here at Memorial Stadium in Clemson. No score, but the Tigers are pushing. More and more people are stopping by for Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. They're stopping by for a gasoline that controls deposits on valves and keeps your engine's fuel system clean. They're stopping by for smooth acceleration and the full 93 octane of Exxon 93 Supreme. And don't forget, cash and credit prices are now the same. Considering what you go through to put on most jeans, who needs an exercise program? Try Lee, the brand that fits. To discover the real difference between the world's two leading soft drinks, we're implementing an anthropological study. Chimp A will be allowed nothing but Coke. Chimp B, nothing but Pepsi. The results are astounding. The chimp that drank Coke showed improvement in motor skills. The chimp that drank Pepsi, however, disappeared. Hello? It's him! I've got money in my clothes Money in your clothes And music in my ears Music in your ears And love, oh love, sweet love is in my heart Oh, love is in your heart Money in my clothes Clemson no score, but Clemson's knocking at the door inside the 10-yard line, and they've been successful. Their history inside the 20 has been pretty good. Well, they are the, season. Yep, they're the type of power team in the past, Steve, that there was little depth they were going to stick it in the end zone. That's what they want to do here early. Antoine Wyatt sparkling in his early play at tailback. First and goal at the nine. Here's Priester. Priester breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Clemson. number of true freshmen that that man Tommy West has said hey we got to get going I think they're ready to play Raymond Priester certainly wants to hang out of that fullback spot a playoff left tackle can't find it there can't find it there let's bounce let's bounce off a guy and put it in the end zone that was just a great effort by the freshman out of Allendale South Carolina here is Nelson Welch Kick to a point after he is good. And the Clemson Tigers take advantage of the fumble in midfield. They drive down seven plays and score. Seven to nothing. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Oh, isn't that cute? How precious. So tiny. And such cute little buns. What's its name? It's our junior burger lady. There's nothing junior on Checker's new Monster Value menu. Everything's so big, you won't believe it's only 99 cents each. Quarter pound champ burgers, big deluxe chili dogs, quarter pound Cajun burgers, and more. Checker's 99 cent Monster Value menu. It's a great tasting, monster sized deal. Checker's, one taste and you're ours. Can you believe Zell Miller? The Atlanta Constitution doesn't. It calls his negative commercials against Guy Milner a cynical twisting of the facts. Guy Milner's behavior has been entirely ethical and proper. Zell Miller's mudslinging is not true. Just like his promises to repeal the tax on groceries and serve only one term. And yes, I have made a commitment to serve only one term. Zell Miller. He thinks we'll believe anything. Okay, we admit it. 
at Sportstown, fall is our favorite. Probably because it seems like every sport ever invented is in season or about to be. Being Sportstown, we get pumped about that with all kinds of new merchandise and lots of it. More of it than just about any place on earth. Here, check it out. We got the good at a guaranteed good price. Save 30% on Bushnell Falcon binoculars. Now $16.99. Two hundred seventy five horsepower, two airbags, and now two easy open tops. Introducing the Pontiac Firebird T top and Firebird convertible. Too cool. And Tigers lead Maryland 7 to nothing, and two of the key reasons why. Priester with a nine-yard run. Antoine Wyatt with a 20-yard run to set up Priester's touchdown. And the Tigers lead it here at 7 to nothing. Elson Welch getting set. Jeff Save will kick it off. And it'll be Jermaine Stewart and Brian Underwood back to receive for Maryland. Stewart, three yards deep, and he'll not come out. So Maryland will have it first and 10 at their own 20 yard line after they took the ball upfield started to move it and then fumbled and that's when Clemson took over and six plays later 45 yards downfield Raymond Priester on first and goal his first touchdown and he scores putting Clemson on top first touchdown of his career so Alan Williams steps front of stage center stage rather for the Maryland Terrapins on first and 10 at the 20. He's the man they look to to establish the run behind Kevin Fuller. There's a handoff to Williams on first down. And not much running room there. Darnell Stevens, Michael Barber trip him up as well as inside. That is Warren Forney. There's Wardell Rouse of the Clemson Tigers, a great outside linebacker, one of the top 20 in the country. Well, you see the numbers on the season are actually in the career for Alan Williams, and the bulk of those have come this year, nearly 300 yards on the ground already this year. 163 against West Virginia. There's the fake end around to Walt Williams, and going upstairs, vertical to G.Y. Simon. It is incomplete and knocked down by Brian Dawkins. Andre Carter was helping him in the secondary. Good coverage downfield. Clemson not fooled. This is a long developing play. Watch the All-American candidate Steve Ingram battling against Brett Williams. He gave Foley all kinds of protection. The problem for Maryland, nobody bought the play fake. And when Simon went down the field, Dawkins and Carter, the two safeties, were shoulder to shoulder with him. Five defensive backs in the game now for Clemson. Third and eight. Maryland trailing. They want timeout. The Terrapins want to talk things over as Glenn Foley takes a look at things with 8.55 left to go here in the first quarter. Clemson leading 7 to nothing, and we'll be back after this message from CarQuest Auto Park. My dad's a doctor, and you have to be real smart to be a doctor. Well, my dad fixes cars, and he's a lot smarter than your dad, because a doctor only has two models to fix, men and women, and they never change. My dad has to know how to fix hundreds of car models, and they change every year. Well, my dad helps your dad keep your dad's car running right, and that's his door. CarQuest, preferred by professional automotive technicians. With millions of Americans still enjoying the convenience of their local true value, it's clear a lot of folks can't be bothered traveling to one of those out-of-the-way hardware warehouses. This month at True Value, Home Equip's four-shelf storage unit is only $8.99, and our True Test Easy Color Flat Latex Wall Paint is just $7.98 a gallon. Price check, aisle 300, please. True Value. Help is just around the corner. 1847. An invention from Siemens makes it possible for written words to be electrically transmitted over vast distances. 
That was then. This is now. Today, the ingenuity of Siemens people is breaking new ground in communications and in medicine, in transportation, in energy, and automation. At 60 manufacturing sites in America, Siemens inventiveness continues to open doors to the future. Siemens. Precision thinking. Okay, these guys are the party people. I mean, look at them. They are hungry. So then these guys here, they're the host team. They send this guy over here to Hardee's for fresh fried chicken. It's the perfect play. Hardee's chicken deal is just $5.99. Eight pieces of chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. Okay, watch the replay. Eight pieces of Hardee's chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. So when these guys come rushing in, here's all this chicken to tackle. When you toss a party, make the big play. Have plenty of Hardy's fried chicken to pass around. This telecast is brought to you in part by Hardy's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the ACC. Well, the Clemson defensive staff wanted to put Maryland in long yardage situations. They've been able to do that so far, and the turf offense has been sputtering. Brian Underwood now in the backfield for Allen Williams. Three wide outs to the short side of the field. Mansell Johnson to the wide side, and he gets the look. Now Foley going upfield for Johnson, incomplete. Peter Ford in coverage, and it brings up fourth down. Three downs and out for Maryland, and the Clemson defense responds. The noise generated by the Clemson fans in that end zone, one of the reasons why Foley wanted a timeout. And here comes Scott Milanovic. Dexter McLean will receive the punt of Milanovic, who's one of the leading punters in the ACC. There's McLean, who played quarterback against these Terrapins last year. 7-0, Clemson in the lead. They took a Maryland fumble and punched it in 45 yards. Seven yard, a nine-yard touchdown run by Raymond Priester did the trick. And now here comes Milanovic, who is one of the best punting averages in the country. He's pinned opponents inside their 20 12 times. He won't do it this time unless he gets on a phenomenal kick. But he's trying to give his defense a little bit of breathing room. Setting up the return. McLean, though, will call for a fair catch. And a nice punt by Milanovic of 45 yards with no return at the 32-yard line of Clemson. First Union presents around the ACC. We've got lots of action. Most of it non-conference today. Virginia hosting William & Mary. Duke travels to Navy. North Carolina in Dallas today to take on SMU. Georgia Tech and NC State later today. And in the early evening hours, it's Army at Wake Forest. And of course, Eric Counts leading an ACC leader in defense, NC State. Playing Georgia Tech this afternoon. Great nose guard of the Wolfpack. Here's Lewis Solomon on first and 10. That's up over the 35-yard line to the 36. Brought down on the tackle by A.J. Johnson. Well, right now, the Maryland defense has to throw a stop up here if they want to turn the tide a little bit. Clemson with the fumble recovery. They went right down and scored. A lot of confidence right now in the orange jerseys. See how Maryland responds. Second down and about seven. Hand off to Wyatt, and he's sent in reverse. Jamie Bragg met him at the line of scrimmage along with Cornelius White. And he lost at least two yards. Jamie Bragg is a 4740 at about 270 pounds, and he was in the backfield, but it was Cornelius White, the true freshman out of Newburgh, New York, who also had good penetration as Ian Bragg double teamed the tailback. Solomon rolls to throw. His target there was Kenya Crooks, but it is incomplete. And it brings the punting unit on here for Clemson. So three downs and out. Maryland does, as Jack suggests throws a shutout that series and now they'll get the ball back quickly. Well that big second down hit in the backfield by a white and Bragg the crucial play in the drive. You put Clemson in third and long you force Louis Solomon who doesn't throw all that well into throwing downs. A.J. Johnson to pick up the kick of Nelson Welch. Welch who hit a 33 yarder the first time out. Gets some air under this one. A.J. Johnson. Heads for the sideline, and there's not much there. He's hit at the 30-yard line. Andre Humphrey leading the charge, a 38-yard kick, and not much of a return 
if any. You know, I was surprised. I didn't realize it until Tommy West told us in uh, our interview session yesterday that Virginia got Clemson for 16 tackles with a loss in their game two weeks ago. They already have two today. That'll slow down your offense a little bit. You <laughs> believe it. And that's why he wants to quicken things up. Right now, his defense is on the field as Kevin Foley brings the Terrapins out first and ten. for the sideline it is complete to Walt Williams but not much yardage there about two yards let's go down for an injury report on Raphael Wall here's Mike Hogwood you remember he was shaken up Steve on the touchdown drive by Clemson still not back in there he got hurt in the back of the neck and anytime there's an injury anywhere in that area the trainers are very very careful about it they do think there's a chance he'll get back in there he is feeling a lot better but it was very very painful there for a while Lewis Usher is in the game at outside linebacker. Andre McCrory is also in the middle. Second down and nine. Big blitz is on the pass to take the G. Roy Simon, and he is hit by Andre Humphrey and driven in reverse. They'll mark his forward progress at the 30-yard line. It's a loss of two. Correct play call by Maryland against a Clemson blitz to throw the little fold screen to the wide receiver. The problem was the great reaction by Andre Humphrey off of his quarterback spot. Nobody blocked him, and he made a solid hit in space against G. Roy Simon. Humphrey, a second-team All-ACC selection last year. Nickel package in now for Clemson, third down and 10. 7-0, Tigers. Delay again. Their second such call today. Dead ball. Delay of the game on the offense. Five yards. Still third down. And it brings up a report, really, that Mike Hogwood sent up to us that the crowd noise giving Maryland troubles. And they're a team that comes to the line. They don't huddle. They come to the line and they make calls depending on what the defensive adjustments are. Kevin Foley, obviously, has taxed the clock twice this afternoon trying to make sure his players hear what the call is going to be. Well, I'm sure what they're going to tell the offense is we've got to get set sooner so we have more time to make the adjustments if I have to yell them two or three times. Third and 16. Out of the shotgun, Foley. Foley has time. Now the rush is on. The pass is complete. Caught there by Walt Williams, but it's not going to be for first down yardage. A gain of about seven on the play. The punting unit comes on. Darnell Stevens with the tackle. Once again, an impressive defensive series for the Clemson Tigers. Limiting Maryland's ability on first and second down really short circuits that offense. Milanovich to kick. will come on in quarterback first series of the second quarter. And McLean back to get it for Clemson. A beautiful kick by Milanovic. And he pins McLean inside the 10. McLean on the run comes out tackled by Eric Wood at the 15-yard line for the 13th time this season. Milanovic has nailed the punt and nailed the team inside the 20-yard line. This one from 61 yards away. Well, in Nelson Welch and Scott Milanovic, we have two of the better punters in the country, not just in this conference. Of course, Mike Thomas of North Carolina, another outstanding punter. The, the guy's doing that chore for the teams in the ACC this year. You can really change field position in a hurry. At fullback is James Jenkins. He moves over there from the tailback spot a week ago, providing blocking for Antoine Wyatt on first down. And Wyatt picks his way out to about the 18-yard line, a gain of about two. Ratcliffe Thomas makes one of the many tackles he'll achieve this afternoon. There's Nelson Welch, who is going to become the all-time scoring leader here at Clemson and field goals and everything else before he finishes his 94 season. There's the kicking tradition at Clemson. He stands second in overall scoring and field goals. Here's Jenkins on his first carry of the afternoon, and it's a rude awakening. Tim Brown, Mike Settles, and Cornelius White greet him at the point of attack. 
Good job on second down. Second straight series in which Clemson tried to go inside on second down and a great push off the ball by Aaron Henney. Sophomore defensive tackle out of Allison Park, Pennsylvania. Just stood Jenkins up in the hole and his teammates finished him off. Third down and about eight. Here's Antoine Wyatt looking for room. Wyatt bouncing off people, but Derek Rather will stop him at the 22-yard line. It's a gain on the play of four, but it's far short of the first down, and Nelson Welch will be called upon again. Well, now we have seen two straight three and outs for Tommy West's offense. When I talked to Clyde Christensen, one of their co-offensive coordinators this week, he said we may have to start going away from tendencies, passing on running downs, etc. The problem is field position there dictated a more conservative approach. A.J. Andrael Johnson from Pahokee, Florida, back to get the kick of Nelson Welch. Welch with the line drive. Johnson now will get away from it as Clemson gets good coverage. And they'll down it at the 28-yard line of the Maryland Terrapins. A 50-yard kick and no return, so it's been a punter's deluxe day here as the defense have dug in, defenses have dug in as we close out the first quarter of play. About 2.40 left to go here in the first at Clemson. Our Exxon game of the week next Saturday. It's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets traveling to Chapel Hill to play the 18th-ranked Tar Heels. Jackets looking to spoil North Carolina's ACC home opener. That's next week. Game time, 12 noon on most of these ACC stations. First and 10 for the Terrapins in their own 28. Allen Williams to handoff. There's a hole there briefly, and he gets out over the 30. Darnell Stevens wraps him up for the tackle. He comes out to the 33-yard line, a gain of five. Well, it's not often you see a trap block from a tight end playing in the slot, but that's exactly what they did there. Eric Henry was a slot man outside of left tackle Steve Ingram. He set up wide. Looked like there was a hole there for a Clemson defensive lineman, and Henry, Henry came over and just tattooed him. Clemson gets over early, and it is going to be Raymond White, the redshirt freshman from Clinton, Mississippi, number 97 to get across the line. So it's an offside penalty, encroachment, if you will, against Clemson, and it turns a second and five very close to a first down. They may have to come out and measure. Tommy West exhorting his troops to concentrate. Defense is digging in here. Well, Steve, you know, we saw a lot of this in that Clemson-Virginia game a couple of weeks ago. It drives coaches crazy, the offside, the encroachment on the part of defensive people, because you tell them, react to the snap of the ball. You don't have to worry about anything anybody says. Just keep your eyes on the ball. Easier said than done, as we've seen it for how many years in this game. Right, that's Raymond White, how tough it was. Second and inches, in essence, a free play for the Maryland offense. Foley. Delay handoff, Allen Williams. Second effort, they get it for him. Tim Jones was the man who laid the initial number on him. Wardell Rouse getting up from the pile. Watch the leading tackler for the Clemson Tigers, senior Tim Jones, sift his way through traffic and get the ankle of Allen Williams and keep him from getting much more than the bare necessity for the first down. So it's first and ten. Maryland carefully moving the football over their own 40-yard line. They were in Clemson the territory and put the ball on the ground once. But a delay of game penalty gave them the ball back. The very next play, they put it on the ground again. Foley to Williams. Williams cutting outside, fighting off the block was Wardell Rouse. Marvin Krause, or Marvin Cross, rather, and Mike Barber get the tackle. We have a flag down on the foot. Hold against Maryland. You know, Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, told us, Steve, that he didn't really feel their approach would be that much difference without Jermaine Lewis in the Maryland attack. But it sure seems to me like Clemson is being much more aggressive with their front seven than they than they might have been if they were worried about Lewis taking the ball deep. They're really almost daring Maryland to throw the ball right now. Well, Lewis is their only real vertical threat. He has 10 to speed in the 100. The other receivers are quick because they're about 10-6. 
And that seems to be the difference. Foley back to throw on first and a bundle. His pass is complete for his tight end, Eric Henry, but not for much yardage. About three thrown out of bounds by Wardell Rouse. One of the reasons that Foley had gotten the start last week and again today is it seems he has become a little bit more down the field in his vision in the passing game than Scott Milanovic had been. But to this point, Foley doing the same as Milanovic has done much of this year, being forced to throw the little four and five yard out pass. Second down at about 18. Foley, draw play goes down to Williams and he's wrapped up. After he crossed the 35 yard line, Jones gets the initial hit. But there are others to help out, including Mike Barber. Tried to influence the Clemson defense with that counter trap play. But boy, I tell you what, the down guys are doing a good job of keeping the Maryland offensive line off the linebackers. And you see Jones and Barber and Rouse running free to make tackles. Third and 14, Maryland trailing by a touchdown. Clemson has their nickel package in, in essence, six defensive backs instead of five. Four-man rush for Foley, who steps up and misses the hands of Walt Williams. Andy Ford covering on the play, and we've got our fifth straight punt coming. Standing O for the Clemson defense. Keep in mind, this is a defensive unit that was run all over by NC State and by Virginia. It was only the Virginia turnovers that kept that game close. But here they have been impressive in the first 15 minutes. Milanovic, Milanovic has been probably the most impressive, impressive Maryland player so far with his kick of 61 last time out. This one is more of a line drive that McLean will get under. Dexter McLean up the center of the field, puts the ball on the ground. Clemson thinks they've got it. Let's see. It's Clemson football. Boy, McLean had it. He had an alley coming up with the football down there is going to be Peter Ford. When you get a line drive punt, many times you get by that first wave, and that's what Dexter did, but he tried to switch the ball to avoid the contact of Russ Weaver and didn't have it secured. There are some folks who say, hey, when the weather's 80 degrees, why are you wearing gloves? That's right. Question Dexter McLean's going to ask right now. Here's Solomon on first down. The throw complete to Antoine Wyatt. Looks spectacular, but got only two yards. A.J. Johnson and Jermaine Stewart cover. But there it is going against tendency. I think we're going to see more of that. You bet. So far after one quarter, with one quarter in the books, the Clemson Tigers lead the Maryland Terrapins 7-0. And if your license plate number is 039-EYC, call within 30 seconds to win $100,000. That's right. Call 555-2445 now, and that money is all yours. We're waiting, but you better hurry. There's only 20 seconds left. Call 555-2445 now. Hurry. Boy, 100 grand on the line, and only seconds left to claim it. Need a little more room in your jeans? Three, two, one. Oh. Try Lee, the brand that fits. Here in the outback, we know what's important in life. Food. You don't mind, do you? No, no, mate. You feel the same way. Get to Outback Steakhouse. I got a bloomin' good recipe for onions. There's a place on the South Carolina coast where Nicholas, Player, Fazio, and Die play together. A place as challenging as it is beautiful, where the wind can be your best friend or your worst nightmare. The place? Kiowa Island Resort, home of the 1991 Ryder Cup matches. The price? Only $59, but only for a limited time. So call 1-800-654-2924 now and reserve the best. This will work for you? Thanks. Some things never change. For over 20 years, Discount Auto Parts has brought you low prices and friendly professional service. Our huge volume keeps prices low, so our customers save money every single day. And our team members are always right here to help. 
So if you're one of our customers, thanks for making us number one. If you're not, well, it's never too late to start saving money. We still take good care of our customers. We still keep our prices low because some things never change. We won't let them. Welcome back to the Exxon ACC Game of the Week from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Clemson on Raymond Priester's nine-yard run early in the first quarter with a 7-0 edge on the Maryland Terrapins. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. A sun splash day here at Clemson. Temperature near 80 degrees and the Tigers now with Lewis Solomon at quarterback. Out there on offense, first and ten. Throwback pass goes to Kenya Crooks. Did he have possession? They're saying incomplete. Well, not yet. Not yet. No. Now he's saying incomplete. Tim Foskew covering on the play. Let's take a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter stats. Maryland being held to 11 yards rushing, probably the most significant, and Clemson starting to build on some of those passing stats now with early passes. Well, they're trying, as we said, to, to change their tendencies, but now they're in a third and seven setup. See what uh, they try and do if you're going to go against tendencies. Look for the run then. Mark is hitting to the wide side of the top. Third down now. Here comes Solomon out of the pocket, and he'll run. Solomon has the first down, and he's in Maryland territory at the 44-yard line. Ratcliffe Thomas helps on the tackle. It's a 14-yard gain for Lewis Solomon. Ran the blitz against Solomon. But well, everybody gets caught inside. Watch number 46, Radcliffe Thomas. He's caught inside. Contain is broken. Lewis Solomon in the open field was just a little bit too much for Jermaine Stewart. Finally, Mario Chavez came up to make the stop. First and ten. Here comes Antoine Wyatt. Not much there. Jamal Webster, the first man to, to get him. And let's get out of the sidelines. Mike Hogwood, and he's got one of the best left-handers in Major League Baseball. All oh, right, you are, Steve. Starting pitcher in the All-Star Game, pitcher for the Yankees, and a former Clemson Tiger. I understand that's one of your big keys to success, is that you still wear the Tigers when you're even when you're pitching for the Yankees. I have several Tiger T-shirts, and I, I have one on him when I'm pitching out on the mound, and I always will as long as I pitch. Uh, Clemson meant a lot to me, and it still does. How about this team here today? Well, we're trying to get a win here. It's a tough start for the Tigers, and, uh, you know, we're ahead right now, and hopefully we can win this game and get on a roll. Uh, you just saw Solomon there for a couple of yards. We'd love to be – this is a World Series year for the Yankees. I know you would rather be somewhere other than here, but it's good to have you. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right, that's Jimmy Key, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Left-hander, played his uh, college ball here at Clemson. Third down coming up after Lewis Solomon's jot. Third down and three. The ball at the Maryland 38-yard line. Tigers trying to put together another scoring drive. So this, this is what Clemson wants, Steve. Those third and three or less where you really jackpot the defense. Raven Priest who leads the way at fullback. Solomon on the option for the first down. Ratcliffe Thomas and Brett White trip him up along with Pat Ward. However, Solomon doing just what Tommy West had hoped he would do, not get the 20-yard gains, but get the five for first. Well, and they're starting to use a little bit of pulling action. You saw Will Young, number 59, out in front on the play. What that enables Clemson to do is to keep the quarterback uncovered on the option so that his option remains alive. If you get to him early and force him to pitch, you can probably defend it more easily. First and ten at the 33. The handoff goes to Priester straight ahead, the fullback. Pat Ward is helping out on the tackle and also in on the stop. Clemson has had its problems running the football. That's almost unbelievable to say that, but in their last two games, two of their worst games in history in terms of running the ball, and in that game against Virginia, if you eliminate the scrambling of Louis Solomon and Patrick Sapp, they only had 27 yards rushing out of their running backs. They're already over that total in the Virginia game this afternoon. We have a good part of the second quarter remaining. Scrambling again is going to be Solomon, but Mike Settles throws him out of bounds at the 33-yard line. It'll be a loss on the play of three. We saw last week, and actually against Florida State as well, the open field excellence of Mike Settles, a one-time walk-on after transferring from a Division II school, Lock Haven State. He does a nice job of staying in balance and being able to ward off the elusive moves of the 
quarterback or running back, whoever it is, and make a play. Eight tackles last week, two for loss. Blitz is on from Eric Wood. Solomon picks it up and picks up Antoine Wyatt at the 21-yard line. A gain of 11. A.J. Johnson in on the tackle. Move the first down markers as Solomon gets it in the air. Get the touches for Antoine Wyatt. Just a little... Well, some people call that a wiggle route, just something where the running back runs up through the offensive line and then either turns in or turns out, depending upon the defense and the play call. A little turnout route there. You keep the drive going. Seventh play of it, Jack. First and ten at the 21. And off goes late to Priester, and Priester is brought down at the 20-yard line. Quick opening play, Pat Ward is in on the tackle along with Al Wallace. I think Louis Sullivan turned the wrong way when he's able to reach back and get the ball into the midsection of Raymond Priester so they didn't have a bad exchange, but it does put them in that second and long situation. Priester out of Allendale, South Carolina. Jamie Bragg. A lot of speed at 4740, moving over from the offense to the defense. Second down, here's Solomon on the pitch to Antoine Wyatt. Wyatt cuts inside of Brown and gets down to the 11-yard line, or close to it, actually to about the 13, shy of the first down, rather on the stop. Well, this time, Maryland gets the quarterback and forces the pitch, but watch number 88, Kenya Crooks, on the outside of your screen coming up right now with the good block on Derek Rather. Rather eventually makes the tackle, but not before the first down he is nearly made. He got an extra five because of that block by Kenya Crooks. Third down and about one to go. Clemson up 7-0, and they're trying to get down into four-down territory. Here comes Antoine Wyatt, and he's hit by Eric Wood. Wood sets him back, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Al Wallace got upfield in a hurry, and although he didn't make the tackle, he slowed Wyatt down where Wood made the stop. And on fourth and a couple, Tommy West says, I want to go to something I can rely on and get sure points. We got Nelson Welsh on to try a field goal. Welsh, three field goals short of being the all-time ACC leader. Needs four to take Clemson's all-time lead. We'll explain the difference momentarily with the hole. There's the kick and it is good. There is a flag, however, down on the play. So before we celebrate, Nelson Welch is kicked. The kick, the penalty is against Maryland. Looks like Clemson will be in a position to refuse the points and possibly punch it in. Well, I don't know if they've made up their mind yet. Yeah, now they have. Nelson Welch, he, he told Courtney Mosey, no, we'll decline it. <laughs> and then Tommy Westman running out there said, no, we won't. <laughs> Both sides on the defense, five yards, first down. Welch had to officially go out because he's the captain in the special teams group. So I always love that about football, you know. The, they look to the sidelines, the coaches yell, but the officials can only hear it from a captain. That's right. And the official to the captain tells him, and now first and goal, the penalty giving Clemson a life at the eight-yard line. Priester straight ahead to the five. Great surge off the ball by that Clemson offensive line. Eric Hicks makes the tackle along with Ratcliffe Tunnel. There are some people who always cringe about taking points off the board, but I really think that in this situation, Tommy West made the correct call. You had a clear first down. You're going to be inside the 10. Take your chances that you could get seven instead of the three. You still have a shot at getting the three. Second and goal at the five-yard line. Priester again with the handoff. And again, straight ahead for maybe two more yards down to the three-yard line. Eric Hicks, the true freshman out of Erie, Pennsylvania, making the tackle once again. They're at the three, actually the two and a half. 844, clock moving. Priester, six carries, 23 yards, and a touchdown. He's been featured all three times inside the 10. 
He's in there at fullback. Quiet in the tailback spot. Here's Solomon. Solomon chased by Wallace, now by Settles. Throws it away. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Tim Brown at the nine-yard line. What did I just say about giving away points? He did not expect Lewis Solomon to make a horrible judgment there. Solomon should have just taken the loss and take the field goal. They try and run the naked option. Al Wallace is there. Now here comes Mike Settles. We told you how good he is in the open field. Lewis Solomon had no business trying to throw that ball. He throws a weak pass to Tim Brown and a big turnover. Maryland holds. They've got the football back, trailing by seven. They speak it in England, France, and Germany. It sounds the same in the U.S. and Mexico as it does in Hong Kong and Tokyo. It's the international language of business. And wherever it's spoken, Delta Airlines can put you right in the middle of the conversation. And then we'll bring you back to that place where you don't have to say a word to be understood. Delta Airlines. performance racing demands reliability. That's why the International Motor Sports Association asked Exxon to formulate their official racing fuel. They knew that Exxon would create a high performance fuel that exceeds the demands of grueling race conditions. And that same reliable performance can be found every time you fill up with Exxon 93 Supreme. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. Is that a new credit card? Uh-uh. It's my new First Union check card. It's got great and wondrous value. What to do? It's magic. It's like a check. It pays for our lunch, takes the money right out of my checking account. Ooh, clever card. Mm -hmm. And buy some gas, some groceries. It's even an ATM card. I can use to get money here or anywhere else in the world 24 hours a day. Let's go. Where? Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking dinner in Rome. Yeah, sure. I'm thinking somewhere closer to home. Give me that. Excuse me. Get all the value of the card that works like a check. The check card from First Union. We're at the Chrysler test drive, along with off-duty police officer Kirk Harris to test drive the performance of the 3.5-liter 24-valve Eagle Vision. You think he can handle all that power, officer? We're trained to go fast. Well, you have a nice day, then. That was great. Those 214 horses really moved. What did you get the speedometer up to there? You know, I don't know. I wasn't uh, paying much attention. Well, I was. I'm going to need you to step out of the car, sir. Let's go. Test drive a Vision at your Jeep and Eagle dealer, or call us. Lewis Solomon, I'm sure, ruining the judgment, the decision he made. It cost his team at least three points because they could have settled for the field goal. And Tommy West made that point clear to Lewis. You love to see a guy try and make something happen, but there are times when you have to say, hey, it's not there. Just take what's left and go on. Scott Milanovic, the new Maryland quarterback, with Brian Underwood. And it's his tailback. This is customary for Maryland to get the backup quarterback in. First series of the second quarter. His first pass is complete to Agabu at the 19-yard line. Mike Barber making the tackle. There you see Scott Milanovic, the fourth man in Maryland history to throw for more than 4,000 yards in his career. He's not really yet found the rhythm, the tempo that he had last year when he did a masterful job of running this offense. Kevin Foley had a rather erratic, unproductive first quarter. A lot of it's tasted success in the second quarter against Wake Forest. And got a few more series than everybody anticipated. There he is, back to throw again. Facing pressure, getting away from Lamar Simpson, but Mike Barber makes sure there's no further progress as he gets out over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Gain of maybe two yards. Scores from around the country. Rutgers leading 13th-ranked Miami in the second quarter. That's what surprised Miami, of course, got beat last week. Top-ranked Florida leading Ole Miss 14 to 7 in the first. And for the latest scores of just the games you want, you see the number on your screen. Calls are just a dollar a minute. Kids, please get your parents' permission. Second down and seven. Well, trying to 
get out of the shadow of their own goalpost and doing a pretty good job of it. Underwood drives it outside. Rouse has him first, and Dawkins comes up with a cleanup tackle. No gain on the play. That little shuffle pass screen that they like to run. Watch the reaction of the linebacker. You see Barber and Rouse and company. There's Wardell Rouse stepping up. He ends up coming off but gets back to claim his share of the tackle. He's had a wonderful year. Rouse, the senior out of Lewiston, Florida. Mike Barber battling a shoulder problem has also played well. Maryland yet to strike on third to first. Looking at third and eight. Back to throw and going upfield for Johnson. Intercepted by Andre Carter. Carter with his third interception of the season. Gives Clemson the football back at their own 45-yard line. Tried to find the hole between the underneath coverage and the deep safety. He overthrows Johnson, but Mansell Johnson, he gives up on this ball. He's already decided that Carter is going to intercept the football. You go up, if anything, take interference. Don't let the guy catch it without any effort. Clemson leading 7-0. They'll have it when we come back. Football means tailgate parties, and tailgate parties mean Food Lion. Their quality foods make every party a winner, because each week, Pepsi and Food Lion are giving away five tailgate party packages of four ACC football tickets and a $50 Food Lion gift certificate. Enter at the Pepsi display. Grand prize is the classic Jeep Cherokee Sport with four-wheel drive and legendary Jeep toughness. Nothing beats football, food, and tailgate parties, and nobody beats Food Lion for quality and extra low prices. Okay, these guys are the party people. I mean, look at them. They are hungry. So then these guys here, they're the host team. They send this guy over here to Hardy's for fresh fried chicken. It's the perfect play. Hardy's chicken deal is just $5.99. Eight pieces of chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. Okay, watch the replay. Eight pieces of Hardy's chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. So when these guys come rushing in, here's all this chicken to tackle. When you toss a party, make the big play. Have plenty of Hardy's fried chicken to pass around. Atlantic Coast Conference football on WGNX Channel 46 Atlanta is brought to you in part by your local Atlanta Ford dealers. Ford's factory authorized clearance is in its final days at your local Ford dealer. Now get America's number one truck, the Ford F-150. Clearance price at only $2.29 a month. Now because it all ends September 30th. This week on the road. Shut up and get Go in concert with Mary Chapin Carpenter. He thinks he'll keep her. And on the set of her latest music video. Plus, Leroy Barnell and Aaron Neville. This week on The Road. Tonight at 7 on Channel 46. The Clemson Tigers up 7 to nothing, Six and a half to go here in the second quarter at Memorial Stadium in Clemson. Steve Martin along with Jack Oregon and Mike Hogwood. The rushing yardage, Clemson with 100 yards, 40 more than they got in the entire game against Virginia two weeks ago, and they've held Maryland to just 14. On first and 10, following the second turnover by Maryland, here's Antoine Wyatt. And Wyatt gets himself knocked out of bounds in Maryland territory at the 47-yard line. A.J. Johnson in on the tackle, but it's a gain on the play of close to eight yards. And it's the speed of Antoine Wyatt and the vision he has as a running back. Watch number 90 in white for Maryland, Eric Hicks. It looks like he's got a play as he's warding off the block, but instead Wyatt runs his shoulders in, dips it back outside, just runs around. This time it's Priester for the first down at the 40-yard line. Tim Brown in on the tackle. Flag on the play, however. And it's going to be a motion penalty against Clemson, so a race the game. Clemson tried to go with a quick snap count that time. Catch Maryland not prepared defensively. I think one of the wide receivers hadn't been set. You have to be set for a full count before a snap can be made. You know, you talked about Antoine Wyatt getting... 20 touches at least this game. He's caught two balls. He's carried the ball 11 times, so he's up to 13. 
He had a big 20-yard gain to set up Clemson's first touchdown. Second down and about seven. Maryland jumped to get back in time. Priester stood up by Aaron Henney and Mike Settles at the line of scrimmage. Not much doing there. So Maryland's defense starts to stiffen. And they forced Louis Solomon into an obvious passing situation on third and long. Well, as this game has gone along, the down linemen, the, the middle three, the tackles that have been in there, Bragg and Henny and White and Pat Ward are starting to win the push with the interior of the Clemson offensive line and those dives to the fullback are not gaining the advantage they did previously. Clemson, not sure what they want to do on third and long, has taken another timeout. So Lewis Solomon will come talk with Rick Stockstill and head coach Tommy West as the Tigers ponder how to build a 7 nothing lead. More and more people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. They're stopping by for a gasoline that controls deposits on valves for a cleaner engine. People stop and buy, rely on 93 Supreme for a cleaner engine which reduces emissions for cleaner air. People stop and, buy, rely, and don't forget, cash and credit prices are now the same. Relax Fit Jeans from Lee. are the party people. I mean, look at them. They are hungry. So then these guys here, they're the host team. They send this guy over here to Hardee's for fresh fried chicken. It's the perfect play. Hardee's chicken deal is just $5.99. Eight pieces of chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. Okay, watch the replay. Eight pieces of Hardee's chicken and four biscuits, only $5.99. So when these guys come rushing in, here's all this chicken to tackle. When you toss a party, make the big play. Have plenty of Hardee's fried chicken to pass around. Tommy West made a coaching decision that only a turnover inside the five yard line could destroy and it did just that. Now his team faces a third and seven after an interception following that miscue. And now they need to keep their drive alive. Solomon needs to go back and throw and does just that to Antoine Wyatt. It is ruled a catch for a first down at the 44 yard line. Right in front of Daniel Huera. Guerra making the stop at Wyatt with his 14th touch of the day in his third reception. Well, it seems like every time they throw the ball to Wyatt, they put it in a spot where nobody else could catch it. Angel Guerra with pretty good coverage, but not a whole lot you can do as a defensive back. And you can see from that angle that Wyatt got the hands underneath the ball for the legal catch. Of course, Clemson last time down took points off the board in an attempt to score. Screen pass this time from Duke to the fullback Priester. Nice move to shake off two would-be tacklers, and he gets beyond the line of scrimmage for a two-yard gain to the 42-yard line. Making the stop will be Rackle Thomas and Tim Brown. Well, Raymond Priester making like former Clemson pitching great Jimmy Key had a couple of Terrapin swing and miss on that one. Al Wallace and Mike Settles went flying by untouched but the pursuit got there before he could get much in the way of yards second and eight here comes Wyatt dancing his way to another first down Kim Brown Jermaine Stewart and others in on the tackle along with Lamont Gore but it's another first down for the Clemson Tigers and another big gainer for Antoine Wyatt Antoine Wyatt is dead Alvin played in the NFL for a number of seasons with the Buffalo Bills. 
He's got all the shake and bake you want in a running back or a wide receiver. He actually spent time this summer with former NFL receiving great Wes Chandler working on improving his elusiveness. First down, Solomon to carry. Pat Ward to ride it down at the 31-yard line. Game of two. Clock moving, three and a half left to go here in this first half. Clemson with two timeouts, Maryland the same. Ward, another one of those converted offensive linemen to defense, and the addition of Bragg and Ward to the defensive line has stabilized that unit. Well, I've gotten them a lot bigger, too. Pat Ward is 290 pounds, replacing guys who were going at 240 and 235. Yes, and Marcus hits hitting split wide to the right side, but it's wide. He's going to take it on the pitch. Change of speed and direction. Finally getting him to go down. I believe that's going to be Ratcliffe Thomas. Yes, it is. Nice gain by Wyatt. The speed and the direction change helped buy him some yards. Tell you what, he's going to get those 20 touches in the first half. Nearly lost his balance. Look at the change of direction. See, what he tries to do, Thomas made a nice tackle there, but what you could see, he tries to avoid giving a tackler both shoulders or both hips. When you twist to the side, you narrow down that target area, makes him a harder man to bring down. Wyatt coming to the line and a timeout has been called. Clemson will take it. They'll have one more remaining. And Lewis Solomon talks it over. Play clock went down in a hurry. And so Clemson decided to save the penalty and go to the sidelines and talk things over. We're going to re-rack that replay. And I want to show you again what I was talking about. Watch here after the stumble. As he turns back against the defense. Now watch turns right there. He's going to avoid the two hips. Avoid the two hips again, but a good job by Ratcliffe Thomas. What you teach a defensive player is get the head across the body. You have a chance to stand that guy up. So that was good fundamental football by Antoine Wyatt and good fundamental football by Ratcliffe Thomas. Mike Hogwood's got a heck of a halftime plan for us. Let's go to the sidelines and find out. Well, Steve, we're going to hear from both of the coaches live, Tommy West and Mark Dubner, about what they think about this first half. We're also in our one for the book section. We're going to take a look back at a couple of Clemson great linebackers. And there certainly have been some over the years. Also, we'll tell you about our play of the week and our players of the week in the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's all coming up at halftime here at Death Valley. Mike, uh, it's very pleasant up here. I wonder if you can give us a, a situation of what it's like weather-wise down on the field. Uh, see any fatigue factor from the heat at all on along the sidelines? I really don't see a lot of uh, fatigue right now, particularly on Clemson. They are so pumped up here with this crowd, which is totally into the game. And the fact that they are moving the football and doing what Tommy West said, controlling the clock, they're feeling great. Maryland, they're starting to feel this heat a little. Third and five. 7-0 score. Clemson in the lead. Raymond Priester gets the call. The initial hit made by Pat Ward. and There's not much room there. This would be a long kick for Nelson Welch unless it's going to be a punt, but they're going to send Travis Harvey out to hold, and they're going to give it a try. It will be a 45-yard field goal, certainly within Welch's range. His career long is 53. And he's dead even. The wind will be at his back slightly. Right in the center of the field. Low snap. There's the kick. He got it. Nelson Welch now two away. From the ACC field goal all-time lead. With, it his, was a, with his 59. Excuse me there, partner. That's all right. I was going to say that was, you could see... Mark Duffner. Well, Mark Duffner is going to be enthusiastic about anything, but I think from his perspective, Steve, getting the field goal, keeping them still less than two touchdowns, and with 145 to play here in the second quarter and two timeouts, you feel like you've got a chance to get some points on the board, knowing you're going to have the ball to start the second half because you deferred in the first half. Gives you opportunity to keep this game in contact. If they were down 14 points, it would really change their approach to the remainder of this half and the second half. Certainly would. Right now, they can still do the things that, as Jack said, their game plan pointed out for them. Jeff Salve is getting set to kick the ball away. Brian Underwood and Jermaine Stewart are back. And again, 
you have to point out for Maryland, Jack, that they really can't get their vertical game going without a Jermaine Lewis. Their special teams suffer without Jermaine Lewis. But still, Mark up to try to make do and get something going. The ball is lost in the end zone, and Underwood will just down it, and that'll bring it out to the 20. Well, right there, Steve, just what you were talking about, Stewart and Underwood said, I've got it. No, you take it. And neither one of them did, and they lose any chance of a run back. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Maryland getting set to come out. Milanovic brings them out for his second series. The last one ended in an interception. First and 10 in his own 20-yard line. Milanovic throwing upstairs to Mansell Johnson. Did he get both feet down? Yes. Well, he didn't get both, but he got the one he had to have. At the 34-yard line. Clemson did dominate the clock in the second quarter. As Steve said, this is only the second series for Milanovic. Five minutes almost on that scoring drive for the Welsh field goal. They had it about four minutes on the previous series. They went 16 plays and did not score. Here's Milanovic. Had some time lost the grip of the ball. It's going to be an incompleted forward pass. I don't believe it was batted, Jack. I just think he just it went, it didn't release when he wanted it to. But no, you know what I think it was? He started his forward motion and then realized I don't want to throw it there. Trying to we talk about quarterbacks wishing they had the ball back. He tried to wish this one back and ball just never got out of his hand properly. Good call by Courtney Mosey behind him. It was clearly a throw and not just a lost ball. Second down. And 10 out of the shotgun. A lot of it's with time. His pass complete over the middle. Brian Dawkins flattens G. Roy Simon after about a three-yard gain to the 37-yard line. Maryland with two timeouts remaining, but not really wanting to use it here unless they can keep the drive alive. Third down and eight. Make it about seven. Lanovich, the pass is complete to Underwood at the 40-yard line, but it's well short of the first down. It's fourth down and five, and Milanovic will stay out there to punt. Kevin Foley waits his turn, which may have to wait to the second half, as we're under a minute to play. Here in the first, Clemson leading Maryland 10 to nothing, and Maryland about to kick the ball away. Dexter McLean, who broke off a return, getting set to receive the kick. McLean broke off the return, then fumbled the ball. Nice kick by Milanovic. And he will pin them deep. Does he get them deep enough? Nope. Walt Williams couldn't cover it in time. It comes out to the 20-yard line. A 60-yard kick by Scott Milanovic, who had a 61-yarder to pin Clemson inside their 20 earlier in the first half. Lewis Solomon comes out with 16 seconds left. I would expect Jack Clemson will just run a play and head to the locker room. I don't think there's any question about that. If they tried to do something different, they would surprise every single person in this stadium. What we expect will be the final play of this quarter. Solomon just downs it. And the clock will run through to end the first half. Lewis Solomon looks at the field of battle, sees his team up here 10 to nothing on a Raymond Priester nine-yard run and a Nelson Welch 45-yard field goal. And the Clemson Tigers take that cushion into halftime. Mark Duffner and company talking things over. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood has Tommy West. Tommy, for a half at least, that's a little more like Clemson football. Yeah, I thought we played a little bit better. I thought we played hard. Our, our defense is flying around playing really well, uh, running to the ball. But I thought our offense played a little bit tougher. What are you going to have to do now in the second half? What do you talk about in the locker room? Well, I mean, we got to keep doing what we're doing. But the thing we have to do now we got to be able to pull it out. We've got to be able to wear their defense down in the fourth quarter. And we got to be able to pull it out and get a big play somewhere. You said time of possession is important. You've done it so far, and I know that will be your goal in the second half. Absolutely. If we can keep the ball and keep their offense off the field, it gives us a chance to be successful. All right, that's Tommy West, head coach of the Clemson Tigers. His Tigers out in front of the Terrapins. 
10 nothing. We'll be back with our halftime program from Clemson in just a moment. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. By Hardee's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By BC Powder. No matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than BC Powder. And by your local Carolina Dodge dealer, home of the minivan store and America's truck stop. Who love the way we fly? By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of minivans begins today. It's been six quarters since Maryland has scored on this football field. They trail here 10 to nothing as we get set for the second half. The Clemson Tigers with the lead and uh, standing by with Mark Duffner, the Maryland coach, is our sideline specialist, Mike Hogwood. Mark, what do you got to do to get the offense going here? Well, Mike, we just got to sustain a drive right now. Uh, you know, we've done it. We've kind of shot ourselves in the foot, fumbling the football, turning the ball over a little bit right now. We just got to get settled down and and get a drive going, get a rhythm going right now. Mood of this team still upbeat? Oh, yeah, believe. no question about it right now. We've got 30 minutes to take control of this ball game. It's everybody, anybody's ball game right now. All right, Mark Duffner, head coach of the Terrapins, he still believes. It looks like Kevin Foley will get the start in the second half. Maryland, of course, deferred their option to the second half, so they will receive the football. One of the things we're going to watch in the second half, uh, Rodney Williams, a former Clemson quarterback who was part of their radio crew as a sideline reporter, told our Mike Hogwood that Clemson spent a lot of time in the bye week and this week in practice disguising their pass coverage, look, giving one look and then showing another at the snap of the ball. And without question, it appeared that the Maryland quarterbacks in the first half were confused by the defensive changes that Miles Aldridge and the defensive staff have put in this week. And they still don't have that vertical threat with Jermaine Lewis on the sideline with a shoulder separation. He did not travel with the team. He is expected to possibly rejoin and maybe return to the lineup in two weeks when Maryland takes on North Carolina. Maryland with an open week in their schedule the next week. Here's Jeff Sauvé to kick it off, and we're underway in the second half. Again, Underwood with some trouble handling it in the five. Underwood gets outside and gets nice yardage out to the 29-yard line after a less than celebrated start. And Moskin on the tackle, the 25-yard return on Sauvé's kick. Clemson, the last two ball games, let the defense stay out there for huge amounts of time. Virginia ran 88 plays from scrimmage a couple of weeks ago, but in the first half, it was nearly a two-to-one advantage for Clemson in terms of time of possession. No matter how good your defense is, they're out there for 88 plays. Something bad's going to happen to them. Kevin Foley back to throw on first down. And Ansel Johnson complete. And Ansel Johnson moves people up over the 40-yard line where he's got a first down. Peter Ford and Mike Barber brought him down, but Mansell showed some steel there. Well, Mansell had one of those few times when the guy hitting him was littler than he was. Peter Ford at 5'11", and about 175. Johnson at 6'1", 175. So he said, well, that's a lot easier. Touch first and 10 at the 41. It's simple physics, really, right, Jack? Physics was never simple for me. Foley <laughs> off to Allen Williams. And life's not too simple for him. Marvin Cross, first man in on the stop, along with Lamar Thompson, Lamar Simpson, rather. Cross from Durham, New, New North Carolina, Jr. That's a veteran offensive line for Maryland. You have to be impressed with the domination of the line of scrimmage by the Clemson front so far in this football game. They've not allowed much in the way of openings for the inside running game. Second down, about nine. Play action to Williams, the roll out by Foley, and the tackle by Marvin Cross. <laughs> Carlos Curry won't let him dance, but the result is just the same. 
a tackle for lost yardage that'll put Foley in a definite passing situation. Well, the bootleg action and the center, Eric Greenstein and Eric Henry, the tight end, are supposed to double team Marvin Cross. And it looked like Greenstein coming over to help knocked Henry off of Cross, and Marvin took advantage of it to get the sack. Third and 16. This is not what Mark Duffner wanted to try to keep the ball alive. Big rush is on by Clemson, and they sack Foley. Again, it's Cross with Carlos Curry. They put the pressure from the outside with Rouse and Stevens, both outside linebackers blitzing on the play, forced Foley back up into the middle of the pocket where Simpson, number 99, and Cross, number 91, make the tackle. See the outside there, Wardell Rouse forced him up the middle, and there you see Simpson and Cross making the second consecutive sack. Simpson, a junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Milanovic back to kick again. McLean gets under it at the 29 and then just fumbles it out of bounds. It's a 40-yard boot for Scott Milanovic, and it's going to be Clemson football back at their own 29-yard line. So the Clemson defense, courtesy of Marvin Cross, held. That was the Marvin Cross defensive series. Well, it shows you when you utilize that off-week time properly and a bye week early in the season enables you to get back and and run that like mini spring practice. It can pay dividends. It has for Clemson. First and ten. Solomon hands off to Raymond Priester, and Priester breaks off tackles for a first down at the 41-yard line. Making the tackle, A.J. Johnson, and he had help from Jermaine Stewart, or actually Mike Settle, who gets up a little slow. Gain of 12 on the play. The other factor, what the bye week helped Clemson be on the emotional side of the Steve, the fact that they ran three a day practices in spring ball, you run three straight games. Well, you need a day off. You need a couple of days off. And off goes to Antoine Wyatt. His 17th touch of the game. Out over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Jamie Bragg and Tim Brown in on the tackle. Wyatt now. Clemson's domination of the line of scrimmage on both sides starting to become complete. Good block by Stevon Wynn to seal the corner against Al Wallace. That enabled Wyatt to bounce outside and get good yardage. Wynn, the fifth-year senior from Winsboro, South Carolina. Second down and about five. Flagging on the play as Priester gets near midfield. Tim Brown helped out on the stop. Let's see what the flag's going to be about back at the 47. Well, in that area, it's usually holding on the offensive line. You're so right. Well, you know, it's, penalty flags are just like real estate. Location means everything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they weren't on beachfront property. See, the least. Look at those numbers with the two sacks, the Maryland rushing game down to just three yards. That's the only thing that I, I, I wish the NCAA would do their stats like the NFL. I think sacks should go against passing yardage rather than rushing, rushing yardage, unless the quarterback really is scrambling on the play. Exactly. Second down and long. Luis Solomon out of the pocket. It's chasing him. The pass complete to Marcus Hinton, but he said he was out of bounds. Didn't get a foot down, so Hinton's catch goes for not. And it brings up third down. Well, it was the pressure that forced Louis Solomon to reload. Watch this on the replay. As he rolls to his left, he wants to throw it there. But the pressure by Angel Guerra, who was rushing on the plate, took him farther outside and... The knee apparently was down to the official had the angle right on top of but the knee hit before there was possession. Third down, 14. Solomon on his own carry. Surges ahead to the 45-yard line. It'll still be long yardage. Bring the punting unit on likely at the 45-yard line. Now both coaching staffs talked about striving for consistency. They holding penalty, taking away the consistency on this drive, and Solomon tried to maybe make something happen with the option away from the strength of the formation, but he ends up six yards shy of a first down. Well, just cracked off a 50-yarder last time around. Trying to aim 
on an area of the field where he can pin Maryland deep and gets him inside the 20 at the 17 yard line. Timeout on the field, Clemson by 10. There are good reasons why Ford Taurus is America's best selling car. The 220 horsepower, no compromise performance of Taurus SHO. The combination of outstanding design and extra room in Taurus wagon. And the latest addition to the Taurus family, the sporty new Taurus SE. Now there are even more reasons for you to make America's best-selling car your car. 2.9% financing, up to $750 cash back, or special lease terms. Now on Ford Taurus. resistant casuals in 100% cotton from Lee. Serious damage to your engine can happen during startups when your engine is cold. So for a motor oil to protect your engine, it must get to work fast. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend does. It also protects better against thermal breakdown, yet it's less expensive than full synthetics. A difference you can see. Exxon Superflow Synthetic Blend. Protection beyond conventional oils for all the ways you drive. Define value. Oh, all right. Um, a great sale? Uh-uh. Here's value. Mm. First Union's new check card. Now, it looks like a credit card, but... Works just like a check. Uh-huh. Gas, the supermarket, the cleaners. It's so simple to use. The money just comes right out of your checking account. You pay no interest, you get no bills. I like that. Oh, and it's also an ATM card. Oh, yeah, so I don't have to carry a lot of cash around anymore. You never did. Get all the value of the card that works like a check. The check card from First Union. Back at Death Valley. Memorial Stadium in Clemson, our Exxon ACC game of the week. Clemson, 10 to nothing over the Maryland Terrapins. Two series and two punts, and now Maryland with their second crack of the football at their own 17, make it 18 yard line. Foley, play action. Has some time, has a receiver, Walt Williams open. And Williams gets out to the 45 yard line. It's gonna be a gain on the play of 28 yards. That's the first time this afternoon we have seen Maryland throw the dig route. That's the deep crossing pattern. Alt Williams lined to the left of Kevin Foley. Good protection because of the play fake. Williams crosses right through the middle of the secondary and then does a nice job of getting up field all the way out to the Maryland 45. Raymond White almost got over. Here's Adam Williams on the handoff, and he's got some running room. Darnell Stevens and Tim Jones come up with the tackle, but it looks like it's going to be good for another first down for the Maryland Terrapins. Mark Duffner told our Mike Hogwood we need to sustain a march. They certainly have a good beginning here. Easily the best running play of the day. Again, using the tight end Eric Henry as a lead blocker on the play from his slot position. Brett Williams, Raymond White, Warren Forney, the front three for Clemson. First and ten now for the Maryland Terrapins at the Clemson 44. Scrambling is Foley. Stevens in pursuit. He was hit as he threw. Intended for G. Roy Simon. Blitz called Darnell Stevens blitzing from his bandit linebacker position for Tommy West. Alan Williams tried to watch Alan Williams' effort to try and slow him down. Well, not too well, just enough that Foley got around Stevens, but here come the remainder of that defensive front. Brett Williams, the guy that made contact on the football as Foley tried to throw it upfield. Second and ten at the 44. The look around pattern, it goes complete to Mansell Johnson. They used it a lot last week against Wake Forest. Complete down to the 39-yard line, a gain of five. Andre Carter and Peter Ford in on the tackle. Looks like Eric Greenstein, the center, still down for Maryland. He was one of the lead blockers. 
If that's the case, then Jamie Bragg, I just saw him spring from the bench, and he's headed into the ball game. Bragg, who began the season as first string center, moved over the defensive unit, and now he'll be called upon to go back in and play center. Weinstein holding the left elbow. There's Jamie Bragg, like Chuck Bednarik of the Philadelphia Eagles 30 some years ago, playing center and the middle of the defensive line if necessary. Tell you what, that was a very fine play by Peter Ford in the midst of that little slip screen because Clemson again came with a heavy blitz. And if Ford doesn't make the tackle on Mansell Johnson, that's a big play. That's going to go for 20, might even go for the touchdown. Instead, it ends up being a five yard gain and keeps the Clemson defense in the hunt. Jamie Bragg says, I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> now you take a look at this young man who's. Uh, he talked to the coaches about going over to the defensive side. This is him playing on the offensive side against Florida State. That same game, he would come in and play defense. Going the key block, and that springs Brian Underwood for a touchdown. Had a yep. fumble recovery last week against Wake Forest. Had nine tackles so far this season coming in. And right now he's called upon to do the duties offensively at center. Calls out the blocking scheme. Third down and five. Big down here for Kevin Foley and the Terrapins. They trail by ten. Blitz is on the pass complete to Weaver. And Weaver's got the first down. Andre Carter wrestles him out at the 27-yard line. Dan DeRazio, I think, expected the blitz from Clemson. What Miles Aldridge, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers, try to do is, is send extra guys, not only the linebackers, but also a safety, Andre Carter. But Foley picked up his underneath man, Russ Weaver, for a big Maryland first down. Maryland has picked up at least five yards on each of the six plays they've run on this series. They are now at the Clemson 27, first and 10. Foley hand off to Williams, and it stops right there. Wardell Rouse and Carlos Curry stood him up. And that first string Clemson defensive line doing the job. Now that's again that same play. They they line up Henry as a slot receiver and run like a draw play or a delay and let Henry come over and trap one of the defensive interior linemen. Started at the Maryland 18 yard line following the Nelson Welch punt. And it's seventh play. Foley with time, all kinds of time, over the middle to G.Y. Simon for a fabulous catch with Andre Carter draped all over him at the 15-yard line. A nice gain on the play of 12 yards. Clemson showed blitz trying to fool Kevin Foley. Saw it wasn't there, took his time, waited for his probably primary receiver from the get-go. And a good catch by G. Roy Simon and Foley says that's what we're looking for. They're in four down territory now and Jamie Bragg snaps the ball as Simpson got across. The flag flies and David Hack gets into it to Simpson as he tries to push him off the line of scrimmage. This is something that Maryland will do. Their centers are authorized to look down the line and see who jumps across. If they do jump across, Jamie Bragg is authorized to snap the ball to Kevin Foley to get a cheap five yards. That's what Dan DeRazio called it over the phone this week. He says, we're looking for five easy ones. Offside, on the defense, five yards, still first down. Twice they tried it last week against Wake Forest and failed. One other thing at the end of that play, you mentioned about David Hack and a few of the Clemson Tigers discussing world politics. <laughs> Great effort by the NCAA to cut down on fighting, and the threat of a game suspension the following week has virtually eliminated fighting from college football. It's wonderful. Three wide out, wide side of the field on first and five. Foley now changing up. Play clock shows six. Will he get it away in time? Yes, he does. Foley going for the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted by Peter Ford. Ford on his way. Peter can't catch him. Does he step out of bounds? He's still on his feet. Still going. A flag is down. 
But he stepped out of bounds, apparently on the sideline. They're marking it near midfield. They'll be all over Peter Ford in the end zone. But I believe, I believe they're going to mark him out of bounds back at his own 43-yard line. And of greater concern for Clemson back on their 15, Tim Jones is down on the ground holding his left knee. Kevin Foley overthrew the intended target, and Peter Ford with the interception, and Tim Jones down on the 15. The crowd noise is factor here. He tried to check off. He overshoots G. Roy Simon. Peter Ford makes the catch, and it was the effort of John Teeter just enough to get Ford to go out of bounds up around the 40-yard line to take away what would have been a nearly 100-yard touchdown. Clemson 10-0. We'll be back after these messages from your local ACC station. First, we blow the power line, and then we cut the phone line. This town is tearing itself apart, Reggie. There's only one thing that can save it. What? The truth. Never. Get out the way. You're gonna have to kill me first. Underestimate the power of a good fight. A holocaust. Vanishing Sun 2. The battle begins. Today at 5 on Channel 46. Your local Ford dealer's factory authorized clearance is in its final days. Just about 2.9% financing on Ford Taurus. 2.9, the lowest Taurus finance rate of the year. Act now, save now. 2.9% or $750 cash back on the number one selling car in America. Drive any new Taurus. Just 2.9% for up to 48 months. Now, don't wait any longer. All these Fords are moving. Hurry, see your local Ford dealer now. Oh, isn't that cute? How precious. So tiny. And such cute little buns. What's its name? It's our junior burger, lady. There's nothing junior on Checker's new Monster Value menu. Everything's so big, you won't believe it's only 99 cents each. Quarter pound champ burgers, big deluxe chili dogs, quarter pound Cajun burgers, and more. Checker's 99 cent Monster Value menu. It's a great tasting monster sized deal. Checker's. One taste and you're ours. This week on The Road. Shut up and kiss me. Mary Chapin Carpenter with new songs and new performances of favorites. She thinks they'll keep her. And go on the set of her latest music video. Grammy winner Mary Chapin Carpenter. The country and blues of Leroy Parnell and the legendary Erin Neville. Behind the scenes and all new performances. This week on The Road. Tonight at 7 on Channel 46. Peter Ford, with his third interception of the season, has the cool wet towel draped over his head on the sidelines. It would have been a 99-yard touchdown on the interception had he been able to stay in bounds. Kevin Foley's turnover keeps Maryland scoreless. The third turnover of the afternoon for Maryland. Here's Antoine Wyatt fighting his way to midfield. Hit hard by Ratcliffe Thomas at the 50. It's a seven-yard game. Tim Brown and A.J. Johnson also in on the tackle. Now that Clemson defense has done a remarkable job in terms of forcing turnovers. They've been giving up yardage, but the turnovers sort of wash all those problems away. And they've made many of their turnovers deep in their own territory. They're plus 11 right now in turnovers. Lewis Solomon gets out of Pat Ward's grasp. And Tim Brown and Ratcliffe Thomas bring him down at the 48-yard line. Let's toss it down to Mike Hogwood, who's got a word about how Maryland's braving the weather. Well, it's pretty hot down here, Steve, and there it is really a tired defense. And keep in mind, Jamie Bragg's not in there. He's going to have to go the rest of the game at center. Eric Greenstein may have a broken arm. They're taking him for x-rays right now. And also remember on this defense, Raphael Wall injured in the first half. He bruised his neck. He has been declared by the trainers out for the rest of the game. So there are some second teamers who've been out there playing, and they've had to go a long way. And it is a pretty tired defense. I tell you, the loss, there's Tim Jones along the sideline testing out that left knee. Had it operated on prior to the season after entering into preseason. Had it scoped. You see he's got a brace on it. Out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. Now that's produced a lot of great football players, many of them playing in this game. 
Bragg's absence from that defensive unit, Jack, will be big in this third and now into the fourth quarter for Merrill. Well, they'll need continued good play out of Pat Ward and Aaron Henney to try and minimize the departure of Bragg back to the offense. You saw the Tigers just a little bit shy. Clemson with a third and short. Five for 12 on third down conversions. Clemson looking at third and less than a yard. Solomon takes it himself and he's got it. Solomon ahead to the 46 yard line. Pat Ward in on the tackle with Ratcliffe Thomas. Well, join us for a great college football matchup at the Outback Steakhouse Gator Bowl on December 30th. Send us a postcard with your name, address, and telephone number, the address you see on the screen right there, and register to win a trip for two, including game tickets, hotel, and airfare. The winner will be announced during the ACC Game of the Week on November 19th. You must be 21 years of age or older to enter. Jack's just made the cut. Solomon on the key. And Jermaine Stewart shuts him down after about a three-yard gain. After the 43-yard line. Clock moving, 5.56 left to go here in the third quarter. Clemson trying to take advantage of their third acceptance of a turnover this afternoon from the Maryland offense. I keep waiting to see sometime out of the option action Solomon dropping back and letting it fly. Granted, he doesn't have a powerful throwing arm, but where the Maryland secondary is creeping closer and closer to the line of scrimmage. Second half and seven. That's hidden in motion across the formation. This is Wyatt on the pitch. Gets out of Thomas's grasp, but A.J. Johnson makes his tackle stick at the 41-yard line, a gain of one. You saw the crowd announced attendance 68,000 on Parents and Youth Day here at Clemson. One of the improvements in this Maryland defense has been their tackling. They had problems tackling last year, did not do a very good job of it in their season's opening loss to Duke. But guys like Mike Settles and A.J. Johnson weighed in. Jermaine Stewart, who came over from offense, making great improvement in that area. Another third down coming up. Clemson 6 for 13 in that category. The pitch to Wyatt. And Wyatt has another. Wyatt changes direction and gets down to the 19-yard line. Settles finally brought him down. It's a 21-yard gain for Antoine Wyatt. Watch in this replay. Radcliffe Thomas, Cornelius White, and A.J. Johnson are all right there. Look at them. The three of them standing there ready to make a play, and Wyatt leaves them in his wake. Finally, Mike Settle saves what could have been a touchdown run. 100 yards for Antoine Wyatt. First down, handoff goes to James Jenkins. Aaron Henning says, hello, at the 18-yard line. Maybe a yard for Jenkins. Jenkins is a freshman out of true freshman from Yonkers, New York. I'll tell you one thing about James. If they're going to move you to fullback, son, you better not run straight up and down like he has several times. You've got to drop those shoulders a little bit when you run inside the tackles. That's the second time that he has been waffled by a down lineman trying to run up in between the, the, the guards. Of six lineup changes that Tommy West made with the off week. Here comes Solomon and A.J. Johnson rushes him down at the 16-yard line. Gain on the play of about two, but Clemson maneuvering to another third down here. This would be third and seven. Good play by A.J. Johnson. Again, trying to make a play in space. That's so hard to do for a defensive back. Take a look at some scores from around the country a little bit later on here. There's Mark Duffner looking on, hoping his defense can hold on. Third down. Clemson up 10 up. Solomon on the pitch to Wyatt. A little bit of room. Jermaine Stewart, though, dances long enough to wait for the coverage to come help, and he's down at the 12-yard line. Over 100 yards on the afternoon for Antoine Wyatt. And again, as you see some scores elsewhere, Virginia leading in the second quarter. Miami finally pulling away a little bit from Rutgers. There's the Jefferson Pilot score line phone number, a dollar per minute, 18 years of age and over. 29-yard field goal coming up from Nelson Welch. It's on the severe left hash. Travis Harvey to hold. There's the kick, and it is good. And 
Nelson Welch is one field goal away from taking the all-time ACC career lead. His kick of 29 yards gives Clemson a 13-0 lead. Resistant casuals in 100% cotton from Lee. Introducing Ford Contour. Go, a world car for the 21st century. Result, world-class technology in two all-new engines, including a 24-valve V6 that runs 100,000 miles between recommended tune-ups. Outstanding safety features from dual airbags to a steel safety shell, even a filtration system that removes virtually all dust and pollen from the air. The totally new Ford Contour, a world car for the 21st century. Every day in 34 countries and over 300 cities, Delta Airlines takes off to the world of facts and figures, budgets, and bottom lines. And when the job is done, we bring you back to the world of mommies and daddies, boyfriends, girlfriends, and best friends. Delta Airlines. Downsizing. Downsizing. The government's downsizing. Corporations are downsizing. Is Burger King the only place 